Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my channel. Today we're actually getting back to this. I started it almost a year ago and today we're not going to finish it. Let's dive in. So yeah, I uh, haven't pulled this out in a while. We're going to finally get back to making the end table. Um, if you haven't seen this, I'll have links to the previous videos down below. But this is going to be a really fun one with a two-step, kind of an older style and uh, making it a little bit more of a mission feel to it. But um, yeah, let's figure out where we left off and see if we can pick up from there. Today we're mostly going to be working on the hash work. Uh, and this is a panel that's rather common in mission style or arts and crafts style. And it kind of sets them apart. Uh, I've often referred to it as early American Kumiko uh, because it kind of has that feel to it, except for it tends to be uh, rectangles and squares. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright used it quite a bit in his work. So there's going to be two legs at the back going all the way up through this, and then we're going to have two shorter legs. And then in between those shorter legs and the back legs, we're going to have this hash work. The top and bottom of the hash work will have stretchers, and that's what I'm working on here. These are inch and a half by three quarter inch, and uh, we're going to then cut them to lengths. Uh, we want to make them long enough for the board between the legs, as well as a through tenon going all the way through, and then sticking out either side of the legs a quarter inch. So the legs are inch and a half thick. Uh, they need to be an inch and three quarters longer on both ends for a total of three and a half inches longer than the distance between the legs. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> the next thing we want to do is mark everything, and it's very, very important to mark everything out. I'm laying out exactly where the shorter shoulder would be, so I've got a th quarter inch sticking out plus the leg, and then I can make that mark there, draw that on the box, and run it around. And once I have that on one end, I can cut that particular tenon. I'm going to set the chisel on the top and then mark the exact width of the chisel. Those two points make it very easy to then set up the marking gauge so I can set it up to the, the marks on either side of it. I'm also going to be always referencing the face of the board that has the tape on it. Always keep your reference face and reference edge so you know where you're going to be going. We're going to start by cutting down the cheeks, and I like to go corner to corner on the edges I can see, and then uh, rotate it and cut corner to corner the other way. And that way I can always cut on the edge I want to see. Come back, trim it up, and we've got a, a basic tenon. I'm only putting the two shoulders in this because it is going to be a bridle joint on the top. Um, on the bottom ones, it actually goes all the way through the leg, um, so there's there's no reason to, to create another shoulder unless you really want to create another shoulder. Now that I have the first shoulder marked out, I'm going to be marking out the distance of the second shoulder. Uh, and I always wait to do the whole cutting on it so I can make sure that measurement is exactly what it wants to be. Because this is the very first thing referencing the exact distance between the legs, I used a tape measure to mark it out at whatever length it was. I believe it was 11 inches or something of that nature. Um, if I had something already that length, then I would take this board over and mark off the reality of it. For all of the hash work going in between, we have now, these small pieces this, of 3 eighths this, by 3 quarter. Uh, they're exactly one half the so dimension of the regular stretchers, and that makes that, that standard line. feel on it. Uh, for the ones that need to go front to back, those need to have shoulders that precisely match the stretcher that I just cut, and so I can lay those out and mark their length on it. For the tenons on these, they're a lot easier to cut the shoulders. I'm just going to cut in the shoulder around, and then the cheeks, I'm just going to chisel them out. The grain is fairly straight, so they pop out rather well. And these don't need to be very tight. They're not structural. They're just going to be going into a slot and fitting in. Once I have one of them out, then we can transfer all the marks to the other one and make two of these. There are going to be two pieces running um, front to back and then three pieces running up and down. The big key thing to think about is all of the pieces need to have the exact same distance shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, then they'll all line up nicely and you'll have really nice crisp shoulders um, fitting into all the legs. And so the actual length of them doesn't matter because the tenons will stick into the body a little bit and you're never going to see that. And they're not structural, so there's no support on there. They just have to touch the ends. The tenons just keep them from wiggling around too much. But as long as all of the shoulders are precisely the same measurement, then everything will be very clean. So I'm going to start by making the two, um, the two hash pieces that go front to back. Those will match the two stretchers that are on the very top and bottom. Once I have those in place, then we can make the three hash sticks that go vertically. And in this case, 
uh, they're the first item to actually lay out the the vertical length. And so the shoulder distance on those, I can make it about whatever I want. But I want it to match the, the leg that's already there. For the actual layout, I'm going to create half lap joints for all of these to cross each other. So I'm going to lay out uh, where the right side of all of the connections, or the top side, or one side or the other, it really doesn't matter. And then I can put the stick on cross and lay out exactly how wide that spacing is in between. We want to get all of these marks exactly the same. So I can clamp them together and then come in and cut them at once. That way I can make sure all of the shoulders on these all line up. And you're going to be cutting the front to back have three notches that go into them, and the top to bottom have two notches that go into them. And it just matters that they match each other. If they match each other, everything comes out. If they match the drawing, that may or may not be a good thing, but as long as they match each other, that's what we're really working at here. As always, the measurements on the drawings really don't matter as long as the measurements to reality do. So once we get those marked out, we can come in and take out the majority with the chisel, then come in with the router plane and really clean them out. This one's a little bit sloppy, um, but most of them are a good bit tighter than that. So I can, I can test it and shim it back. And I'd rather than be too tight, and then I can take off a little bit more to make them fit in there. If they're a little hair sloppy, that's, that's not a problem. You can see how that one's a bit tight, but I want them to be able to tap down in there and cross each other and give ourselves a nice flat joint. So that's what I want, except for there are going to be six junctions for each of these. So we need to cut out all of the notches on all the pieces. Uh, and that's, that's quite a bit. So we're going to be making sure that all of the lines match up. I'll put a square on all of the shoulders, clamp them together, and this way when I draw the line all the way across the board, I know they're all at the exact same place, and I'm getting the exact same cut on all of them. Again, come in with a saw, cut the shoulders out. If you're not very good with the saw, then stay a little ways away from the line. If you want to hit that right on the line, then great, go for it. Once we get the cuts down, then I can come in with a chisel, and I can split them out. And I'm going to stay a little ways away from the line, um, giving myself that little bit of space that I can come in with the router plane and clean it right down to the surface. Three. And then, hopefully, once they're all cut out, so. they should all pop together. This first one I did was a little bit more sloppy than I would like, um, but that's not a problem because they're all going to be held into place by the two legs and the top and bottom stretcher. They're not going to be moving around. Um, the other one that I did was really nice and tight, and I was very, very happy with that one. Uh, but again, that's normal because you practice in the first one, and then the second one, for some reason, is always better. <laughs> so there's the hash mark, and I want to make sure that all my shoulders line up, and indeed they do, and I want to make sure they also line up with these stretchers, top and bottom. Now we need to make all of these tenons fit into the stretchers top and bottom and the legs front and back. So I can lay out all of my marks from my marking gauge and uh, because the hash sticks are 3 8 inch thick I can make my slots a quarter inch and I can have the exact same settings I had for marking out the, uh, the tenons on the end. And I can lay those out where they need to be along the board and then come with a chisel and chop these out. They don't need to be very deep. They're only about a quarter inch deep. Uh, they don't need to be perfectly tight either. Um, nothing is structural about this, and I may not even glue these in place. I just need them to be able to slot down in and kind of hide the edge so I get a nice clean shoulder joint on there. Now we need to cut the slots to make this whole thing then fit into the legs. And we're going to need to cut those on the front legs and on the back legs. We're going to start with the front ones here, and I can lay out exactly how the tenons will intersect with this board. With that in place, then we can lay out all of the measurements for all of the other tenons. And it's important that these hash marks um, come all the way across. You can see I'm marking out uh, where the edge of the tenon is, not uh, where the edge of the stick is, because it's important that we cut them to the tenon and not the stick. Um, <laughs> because um, you don't want your, your mortise to fit the whole piece, you just want it to fit the tenon if that makes sense. And then just like before, we're going to cut in on either side for the half lap joint down the top. Um, and on the bottom of this one, it's very easy because it's going to be the same half lap joint. Um, however, in the back leg, the top is going to get the half lap, but the bottom one is actually going to get a through tenon. Um, we'll be covering that here in a little bit, but that one's a little bit more difficult. I'll chop in down the line and then pop out from the end, staying away from my line until the very end, and then we can come back in and clean it out. I want to make sure I get a really nice tight fit on here because this is a structural joint. So I want to make sure that's in there good. This one's a little bit tight, so I'm probably going to come back in with a file and clean it up. Uh, but I want them to actually take a bit of a, a pounding to get in. Again, we're going to do the same thing laying out where the small hash marks are going to run into the leg. And in this case, there need to be three of them. Uh, this is one of those points where you just want to take your time, 
slow down, Calm down. and think about it before you go in and lay things out. You want to make sure that you're, you're where you want it to be because once you cut those holes, they're there. And you want this whole thing to be able to fit together and give you nice, tight, this sharp joints. Then we can take it back over to the body where we left off last time, and you can see how this is going to then fit into that back stretcher. We're going to lay out all of the marks from these tenons directly onto the piece uh, with the bottom shelf in place. And this way we know exactly where they're going to intersect with the leg. We also need um, two more stretchers that are going to go side to side uh, between the legs right at the top. And that will form a slat structure for the top tabletop. Top tabletop? Yeah, that thing <laughs> to fit into. So we can cut these to length. Uh, again, uh, we want to make them the total length plus the tenons. Uh, in this case, the tenons aren't going to go all the way through. They're going to stop into the other tenons that did go through. Um, so they're slightly less than half the thickness of the leg, if that makes sense. I want to make sure that they match. Uh, they need to be exactly the same so that my spacing uh, from the, between the back legs is the same as the spacing to the front legs. This one needs a little bit of cleanup on here, and it's very important to dimension them fully before you do the joinery, uh, because once the joinery is done, any dimensioning further will then lead to gaps. Um, so I want to make sure that they're all clean and just about ready. I may end up coming with a last final uh, sanding to get them just where I want them, um, but we're going to, to clean them out. These are also going to get half-lap tenons because uh, they will go into the tops front of the legs. Back. And I also want to mark them so I know which one is front and which one is back, which end is right and which end is left. And I always look at the furniture as I'm looking at it from the front, and my right is that right of the furniture, and my left is that left of the furniture. And I always put the labels on the outside so that I know where the orientation of every piece is. So we're going to cut down the tenons on the ends of these stretchers. And you can see these are a lot shorter, which makes them a little easier. And then we can cut down the, uh, the shoulders on them as well. And then we can transfer the lines to the legs. Um, you may seem that I see that I'm getting a little repetitive on this because this whole step is just a lot of small tenons and small fitting and fiddly work. Uh, it's going to take some time, and you're going to want to make sure you, you go slowly at it and, uh, and really, really take your time on this. This one, you can see that was a, a bit tighter than it should be, and so I'm probably going to come up with a file and clean that so off just a little bit and make sure that they work out right. These are the two front legs, and we want the tenons to fit into... Uh, these, but then Down. not to run into the other existing tenons. So I'm going to set the leg of the, the stretcher on here and mark out the reality of how far down does that slot need to go. And then with the mortising gauge all set up for the quarter inch slot, we can then cut out this half half lap because it's not going to half lap all the way through the top of the leg, it's only going to half lap through into the tenon. Does that make it a quarter lap? <laughs> so now we can come in with the, uh, the tenon saw and cut these down too. And if I go a little bit past on the top, that's not a problem because the top is going to be covered with the table. Again, we can chop in close to the line, come in and pop out on the end, and then chop out more and clean it out until we get this fitting in here nicely. You can see how this goes in just up to where it would run into the other tenon. And then we can fit the other tenon to make sure this actually fits in place. And just like that, we have all of the hash then running into the front leg. And we can make all of our marks onto the back legs and then take it all apart uh, because I need to have these legs in place. Um, this one was uh, very, very tight. And I, I left it that on purpose because I want to have these joints very, very tight. I want to make them so they basically don't need glue. I'm going to glue them. Uh, but I want that nice, snug feeling without ripping anything out. Also right want to make side. sure I mark out all the legs because those hadn't been done before so that I have the right one on the right side and the left one on the right left side. Uh, I had a bad experience once not thing. marking them out and just assuming and then accidentally having the legs flipped. So earlier we had made all of the marks on the back legs uh, with the top in place so we have the exact spacing up the leg of where all these tenons are going to be intersecting because we have the top tenon and the bottom tenon and then we have two um, uh, hash mark tenons that have to go in. So that means that the bottom one is going to be a through tenon going all the way through the board. The top one is going to be a half lap going all the way through the board. And then there are going to be two small quarter inch deep slots that only go in a little bit for all of the hash mark. Lots of little things to cut out. You'll also notice that I have several marking gauges and each one is set up for a specific use. So if I'm marking how far in the tenon comes 
um, on the, the mortise of the leg, I'm going to be using the same gauge on all of those, and I'm going to be referencing the fence off of the reference face or reference edge of the board. And that way I can make sure that they all work out the same. As long as I have that particular marking gauge set up for that particular mark, I can transfer it to any board and have them all in the exact same place. No measuring required. Makes it very, very useful, but that means you need a bunch of marking gauges so that you can have one set up for each of your marks on each particular type of board so that they all line up the exact same. The, the top uh, half laps are fairly simple. We've done those before, but for this one, I need to mortise all the way through. So I'm going to cut down about halfway through on one side and then cut down on the other side. I'm using one of my big uh, quarter-inch uh, mortising chisels, and I love working with these things. They, they do make it easier than just using regular bench chisel, especially for small quarter-inch. Do you need them? No, a bench chisel will do it just fine. Uh, but having a good mortising chisel does some amazing things. For the final fit, we're going to come in with the file, clean them out, get rid of any burrs in there, make sure we have the straight edge on there, and uh, then I want to make sure that the tenon actually fits in and make any adjustments. Um, sometimes I prefer to adjust the mortise to the tenon, sometimes I prefer to adjust the tenon. If it's a through joint, I usually prefer to adjust the mortise as I find that a little bit easier with the file, um, but if it is not a through joint, then it's usually easier to adjust the tenon than not. So we can put the hash mark into that back leg, make sure that all of the mortise lines line up, and then we can do the, the final assembly. We actually get to see this all together for the first time, putting the hashes into the back leg, putting the top stretchers in, and then we can put it all together into the actual body frame. You notice the, the top legs on this actually are a little longer than they need to be. That is by design. I want to be able to shave those off to match the front legs rather than trying to match the front legs to the back legs. It just makes it a little bit easier. And I can do that on a shooting board. But just like that, we can put this whole thing together, and I am really, really happy with how this is coming out. <laughs> so, there you have it. I am really liking how this is coming out. It's designed to match the whole bedroom set. I did a bed build not too long ago, and then we had the dresser build, and it's all that same mission style, and I want them to all to kind of go together and fit. And uh, so this is an extension of that. And I'm really liking how this is coming out. This is almost exactly what I want. I've got a few tweaks on it. We have to do all of the, the trim and details and there's hardware and connections and then gluing it up and the actual finish. And so we still have a good ways to go on this. I will be having plans coming for this eventually. Uh, once I get the, the final build video up, that will come out with the plans. I'm waiting until I get it all finalized so that I can put all the lessons learned into the, the plans themselves. So if you want to build along with that, uh, you're going to have to stay tuned a little longer. I don't know when the last video will come out, but hopefully sometime soon. As we're getting down the home stretch, I'm looking forward to going on with it. If you have any thoughts or ideas, comments, snide remarks, let me know those down in the comments down below. That really helps us out, as well as hitting the like, the share, subscribe. Uh, even if you just put comment down below for the fun of it, thank you. <laughs> You're helping us get in front of more people. You're helping the channel grow. Uh, that really means a lot. And if you really want to go one step farther, there are a bunch of names over here. Those are all patrons on Patreon. And without patrons or members in the channel, we, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by the viewers, and you are the ones quite literally keeping the lights on. We have special perks for both, and if you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to patreon.com backslash woodbyright, or click the little join button down here and find out what's in store with that. I think I'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Usually at the end of the movie, you see the end. But I really can't do that with this video because the end, in this case, is a table.